Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 26, so I'm going to be ranking, once again, every single book that I read this year, but this time it is solely judging them based on their covers. So yesterday for Bookmas Day 25, I did a little Christmas book haul. It was Christmas Day, so I hope you guys had a good Christmas, and I hope it was nice and relaxing, and you got to virtually or safely spend time with your family. But today, I thought it would be fun to do another tier ranking video. I just really love these. Now, last time, it was on Bookmas Day 19, I believe, that I just ranked all my 2020 reads. Every single book that I read in 2020, I ranked based on how I felt about them. Now today we are going to be ranking them based solely on how they look. This has nothing to do with the inside, nothing to do with the content, although I might kind of like relate it to how I feel it represents the inside of the book, but it's literally based solely on aesthetics. So I'm super excited for this one because I love a good book cover. I love judging books by their covers too. I know it's like bad, but I don't know. I just love a pretty cover. I love pretty things, something aesthetic. I'm definitely always down for that. So I'm really excited to take a look at these books and their covers and rank them based on that. I did switch up the category titles for this one and I did not add a category in between the two, which I might come to regret later, like how I was saying in my tier ranking, just based on the actual books <laughs> that I really wish that I had done a like fifth category, but wait, is that five? A sixth category rather, but I still stuck with five today. So for the first category, the highest is art in its highest form. The second category is super pretty because I couldn't really come up with anything else. And then the third category is not bad, just not the best. And the fourth category is makes me a bit sad and finally is tragic. So <laughs> let's just get into ranking these books. So these are in no particular order. Once again, it's actually going to be the same as the other tier ranking video that I did because I'm literally just using the same template. I just changed the titles for it. It was just easier. So tiny pretty things. I'm just bored by it. It doesn't really do a lot for me. So this one, I'm gonna put not bad, just not the best. It's not like an ugly cover. The font is nice. I see what they're going for because it does have like, I get ballet from it. It kind of looks like the ribbons from point shoes. Like I see where they're going. I see the like shattering. I get it. It just, I don't know. I tend to be kind of picky about covers that just have words on them. I prefer a little bit more. You guys always disagree with me with my opinion on covers. Like I just like when things are busy and pretty and I guess that's just my taste but you're always like how can you like that but I don't know I guess I just have bad taste so I'm going to skip ahead here we have all the Neil Gaiman books here but Coraline is for sure gonna go in tragic just because that entire like that cover I mean okay I'm gonna put it in makes me a bit sad if I'm being honest, because it's not an ugly cover. It's just the illustration style is not my favorite. And it makes me think of what is in that book. And oh my God, but the graveyard book, I think that they're actually really nice. Like I didn't love the illustrations for this graphic novel, but I do think that the covers are nice. I will say I like volume one more. So I'll put that one in super pretty. And then I'm going to put volume two in not bad, just not the best. Cause I definitely do prefer for the cover for the first volume. Moving on to Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I think this one, like, it's not pretty, but I do think it really like gets across the message of the book. You see the elevator, you see like the reflection. It is, I think, a good like, indicator of what's happening in the book, but I'm just gonna put it in not bad, just not the best, because it doesn't really like do anything for me aesthetically. I do understand the connection, so it just kind of falls in the middle there. Songs of Innocence and Experience by William Blake. I didn't realize that this one was here, but this I'm gonna put in uh, art in its highest form, to be honest, because I think that his illustrations that pair with the poems are really beautiful. Like, that's one of my favorite things about William Blake, and that's why I enjoyed studying his poetry so much, is because I love how the art came into the poems as well, and I loved analyzing that too. So, 
I will put that one there. Next is Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham. I think that this one is also a not bad, just not the best uh, cover for me because it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. I see it's showing the two different time periods. You have the two different characters, very opposing and everything, but it just, I don't know. I don't find it that pretty. So that's why it's gonna go in the middle. This seems like the most shallow video that I have ever done and I apologize. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin is an interesting one because honestly, I don't really really care for this cover and I kind of I want to put it in the middle again but I also don't really want to put it in the middle but like yeah I'm gonna put it in the middle there's really nothing wrong with this cover I enjoy the fact that there's like that reflection or the shadow rather from the motorcycle that creates a wolf I think that's such an interesting addition but it just doesn't really I don't know it doesn't excite me I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to describe like these middle of the road covers which most of them are gonna be that so next I reread Alice this year which I always do so these for sure are gonna go into art in its highest form I do have those editions uh those are just the ones that I marked off as red, but obviously I love Alice covers. Those ones aren't my favorite, but they are still really pretty. The King of Crows by Libba Bray. I'm going to put in Tragic. I don't like these cover reprints, and I think some people do. I had no clue that a lot of people don't like the original Diviners cover, which shocks me because I think it's so beautiful. Like, it's one of my favorite covers of all time. A lot of people like this reprint, which is interesting to me, but I don't care for it at all. Like, I get the thought process behind it, but I don't like the neonness of it. The color choice is interesting. I don't know. I just, I really don't care for the covers for this series. That's also like they did a reprinted version of the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, and I thought the new covers were beautiful, but a lot of people hate them. And I was like, oh, awkward, because I was talking about how much I love them. Shiny Broken Pieces by Danielle Clayton and Sona Chirai Potra is going to go, I'll put it right next to Tiny Pretty Things in here. It's like the same concept, and I have the same thoughts behind it. I get what they're doing. I do enjoy that they did the inverse color scheme. I think that the colors are really well chosen and I like that they flipped that for the sequel, but neither cover really like, I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. Next is The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. So this cover, it's okay. Like there's nothing really, I guess it kind of makes me a bit sad. I like the font for it. I like, I don't know. It just does absolutely nothing for me, I guess. It definitely like gets across the Christmas, like you have the bokeh and everything. It's cute, but it just, uh, I don't know. It doesn't do a lot. Blood for Blood, I'm going to put next to Wolf by Wolf. Like honestly, these covers I think are totally, like they're fine. They just, there's nothing that I really love about them. I do think the image of this wolf on this one is like a lot more striking than the first one. And the red, like it's almost, I don't know, it makes me think of like sirens going off from invading somewhere. So it definitely is a very striking cover. Next is Odd and True by Cat Winters. I do think that this cover is super pretty. I like the image of these two Two girls. I know a lot of people don't like when there's people on covers and I can't remember if this one's a photograph or if it's an illustration. I think it's an illustration but I love illustrated covers personally so I do think that this one is really nice and it like I don't know the font I'm not a huge fan of but I think overall it is aesthetically pleasing to me. Next is Iron Cast by Destiny Soria. This one for sure I'm actually going to put uh yeah blah, blah. I kind of I'm really torn between art in its highest form and super pretty. I think I'm gonna put it in art in its highest form honestly because I think this is a really lovely cover. It gets across the time period with the font that's used and the image is just so lovely on it. I think it definitely that's one of the things that made me want to pick it up to be honest. Iron to Iron by Ryan Grodin. I would say that this one I mean this is just a novella so it's not surprising. This one makes me a bit sad. I just don't care for it as much. I don't think as much time went into that one but like I said I understand because it is a novella so it makes sense that they didn't put as much effort into it. Under a Painted Sky by Stacey Lee I would say is tragic. So I understand the thought process behind it and like the knot and everything and what they like what they were going for because it is about characters that are kind of trapped but I just don't think that I like it at all. There was a previous cover actually. This is a reprint, but the other cover is beautiful. It's such a nice like image of the sky. This one I just think kind of lacks appeal to me. Princess Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill. I'm going to put in super pretty. I don't love the 
color that they used, like the tan color, I think just kind of bores me, but I do love the illustration of these two. I think they are so cute together. Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, I'm going to put in not bad, just not the best. So I think that this totally suits the book completely. However, I wouldn't say it's super pretty and that's why I'm putting it in this middle category here. Like it totally captures everything about the book. Even the font choice I think is brilliant for what the book is. It's just like, I'm not like, wow, that's a beautiful cover. It is very striking though. Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. I, I'm kind of, torn about this one. Like, I don't think it's ugly. I guess this is kind of where I wish there was a category in between super pretty and not bad, just not the best, because I have very neutral feelings toward this cover. So I'm going to put it in not bad, just not the best, but it's kind of at the higher end of that category. It just... It's nothing exciting, I guess. The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturb, translated by Lilith Thwaites. This one I'm going to put in art in its highest form. I think that that image is so striking and it captures what I thought the book was going to be more so, but you have like that stack of books and I wonder if it's eight. Is it? Yeah. So there's eight books that the character is protecting. So you actually have her stacked on top of those eight books or standing on top of that stack. And you have like the image of the camp in the background and just the colors and like having the Jewish star over top. Like I think that this is a super well done and well thought out cover. Witch Boy by Molly Ostertag. I think this is a nice cover. I'm going to put it in, like it doesn't like, I don't love it, but I'm going to put it in super pretty because I do think it's nice. I like how they used the like mon to wrap around there and it's like I don't know I enjoyed the illustration so I'll put that in super pretty let's talk about love by Claire Kahn I'm also going to put in super pretty like I said I know a lot of people don't like when there's an actual photo of someone on a cover but I don't mind it in certain circumstances and this is definitely one of them I think this is such a nice one I love the colors that were used and that purple is so striking and I know like the colors used are because it's about an asexual main character so that's also a really nice touch and and I love the fact that there's just like the font is kind of like it looks like a paintbrush which is really cool. Spinning by Tilly Walton I would say also goes in super pretty. It's a nice cover. I love the purple. I'm a sucker for purple obviously but I do think that it's really I don't know I, I can't describe why I like looking at things and why I don't like looking at other things. Anne of Green Gables, I'm going to put, this is the graphic novel adaptation. I'm gonna put this in makes me a bit sad because I just don't really like the green color that much. And that's kind of what, I mean, the color scheme for this one kind of kept me from falling in love with this graphic novel adaptation, although I did really enjoy it. But I like, I guess I do get it. Cause I mean, it's Green Gables. It gets across Anne and where she is, but I don't know. I guess it's on the higher end of makes me a bit sad. Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. I'm going to put in the super pretty category. Actually, I'm going to put it in art in its highest form. I love this cover, to be honest. I love the illustration and like, it's one of those covers where there's always kind of something new to look at. And the actual physical copy, like the dust jacket has a hole cut out where the walnut is. And I mean, it's a nutcracker store. So I think that comes across with this cover. Love and Other Trainwrecks by Leah Conan. I think this one is, it's either n this third category or the second category. I think I'm going to put it in super pretty actually because I like the font and I like how spaced out it is. It's very like, there's something about this cover that's very geometrically pleasing, if that makes sense. How everything is spaced out is very nice, and I like the train tracks. Like, I think you get what the story is about from that. Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno for sure is going to go in art in its highest form. I think this cover is beautiful. This is like exactly what I love from covers is just these beautiful illustrated covers. They get me every single time, and this one I think you get the bond between these two characters very well through it as well, and also the seaside element of it. The Wicked Deep by Shane. Earnshaw I would say also is going to go in art in its highest form especially the actual physical copy of this book it's holographic which I am a sucker for I love that so much but you get the witchiness of it you get like it's like an ominous night sky it is a really pretty cover Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett so 
Gem Bennett covers are just, they're interesting experiences for me. I would say that I do like this cover more than Alex Approximately's cover, but it's kind of like, it's super pretty, but bo like bordering on not bad, just not the best because it's not my favorite, but I do think it is a nice cover. And I don't know, there's just, they don't really stand out. I do like the font though, and the fact that they all match so well. The Betrothed by Kara Cass. So I actually love this cover. I think it's art in its highest form. The book itself is another story, but I do think that it's so beautiful. I love that dress. I love the covers that she gets. I know it's just like girls in dresses, but it's so pretty. The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, I think is definitely one that is not bad, just not the best. It's not one that really stands out to me. Although I do like that it's like the font, it looks like it's like written on like someone had a window that was all fogged up and they wrote the title, if that makes sense. I think that's a really cool addition. And I mean, we have the plane there. Like you do, you get the vibes of the book, but that doesn't mean it's like that pretty. Serious Moonlight by Jen Minute. This one's actually probably my favorite of her covers, so I'm gonna put it in the super pretty category, especially I love the spine of it as well. The spine is really pretty. I know we're just judging on the actual cover, but I also like that. My one pet peeve is she's always described as having flowers in her hair, and they didn't do that on the cover, and I don't understand why. It would have been so easy. Check Please definitely kind of falls in the middle. Like, I think the illustrations for this are, oh wait, that's the wrong category. I think the illustrations for this are really cute, but I don't know. It just like, I'm not like, wow, that's beautiful. But I do think like it has a really cute illustration style. I am struggling to describe my things right now. Okay, so next is One Day in December by Josie Silver. This I think is going to go in super pretty, but kind of at the lower end of super pretty. I think you get the gist of what the story is about, but I don't think it like blows me away by any means. Sheets by Brenna Thumler I actually think is super pretty. It's a really cute cover. It just like, it gets what the story is about. And my favorite part of that graphic novel is that it is set at a laundromat and the ghosts in this world, they are sheets. And that's just the cutest thing, the cutest combination. And this cover, I just think they, they nailed it. For sure, without question, A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow is going to go in art in its highest form because this cover is gorgeous. This cover is so beautiful. The illustrator did a fantastic job. I like can't stop looking at it. I think it is absolutely amazing. Beautiful. Like the font combining with the hair, like the color scheme that they use, everything about it is so, so, so lovely. Like I truly love this cover, obviously. The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This one is going to go into super pretty. I think it is a really nice cover. I'm kind of doing the thing that I do sometimes where like I'm hesitant to say that things are like, you know, go to that top category. So they're all ending up in this almost top category. But I think that the covers for this entire series are a lot of fun and they match very well. And yeah, I, I don't know. I like it. It just like, it doesn't stand out to me, but I do think it is a really nice cover. The House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. I'm kind of torn. Honestly, I'm going to put this one in not bad, just not the best. I don't love this cover. I don't really like, I think it kind of seems a little bit muddled. I feel like it could have been something a little bit better. I don't hate it. Like, I feel like it looks better in person than it does actually in the like computer version, I guess. But I just don't think that even in person, it is one that I'm like, yeah, that's a really nice cover. It's definitely not really a book that I picked up based on that. The Right Swipe by Alicia Ray is, I would say not bad, just not the best. Like, it's cute. I don't know. I love these. I do love the adult romances that have these illustrated covers like this, but some of them are just kind of boring, and I feel like that one is a little bit boring, but it also is. Like, I like the fact that you can see that they're talking. You get the digitalness of the romance, but I don't know. It's just, it's fine. Like, it's, it's fine. Almost American Girl by Robin Ha, I think is a really nice cover. So I'm actually going to put that one in art in its highest form because I think it is so lovely. I loved the illustrations and the illustrating style of this graphic novel. And I think that you definitely get that, like what the book is about from this cover with like her being front and center and then all the people in the background because she feels like she doesn't fit in. So I think that really comes across. Time of Our Lives by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This this one's going to go in not bad, just not the best. Like, I think this is an instance of a photographic cover that I'm kind of like met about. 
I don't hate it. It's just not, there's nothing that really stands out to me. I think I prefer, especially compared to the other covers that they have had for their books, especially actually the one that's coming out this year is so pretty. So this one just kind of is meh. Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian for sure is going to go into art in its, high, in its highest form. This is so beautiful. I love the colors. I love that you get the city aspect of it and you get this like group of friends, this found family you really see there. It's just very pretty. Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This one I would say is going to go in super pretty. I think it is well done. I like the fact that they're like together and going further apart. I think it captures what the book is about and I do think the illustrations are really lovely. I do enjoy them a lot. The Key to Happily Ever After by Tiff Marcello I think is a super cute illustrated cover so I'm gonna put that one in the second category here. I think you get that it's about like a like weddings might have to do with it from that car with the like cans that are going there. I don't know if that makes sense, but I like the font to it as well. I think it is a nice one. The Flat Shirt by Beth O'Leary is going to be one that makes me a bit sad, I think. It's not the worst, like that's why I'm not putting it in tragic, but it's just not the best. Like I understand the division there, it's just, I don't know, something about it, like it's just very dull to me. All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban I think is a really nice cover to be honest. I'm kind of torn between these two categories here once again, but I think I will put this one in super pretty, actually. I did like, like I think the characters are super well illustrated. I like the red over their eyes. I think you kind of get like that it's going to be a mystery thriller story, so yeah. I will settle with putting it there. Maybe this time I'm going to put into... <laughs> Honestly, I think the thing that draws me to this book was the spine is so beautiful. It's this beautiful purple color and it has flowers on it as well. But I think that this one I'm going to put in not bad, just not the best. It doesn't, it just doesn't really stand out to me. It's not an ugly one. It is kind of on that border, but we will settle with there. Next is Dear Haiti, Love Elaine by Micah Malit and Maritza Malit, which I'm going to put in art in its highest form because I think this cover is so lovely. I love the fact that like her figure, like the dress is made, I mean, I'm just kind of assuming it's a dress, it might be a top, I don't know, but it's made from the leaves that are on the cover. It's just like so nicely done, so beautiful. I just, I love this depiction of the character. It looks exactly how I pictured her. It's a really nice cover. It's one of the things that drew me to the book in the first place, to be honest. Next is Say You Still Love Me by K.A. Tucker. I am gonna put this one in, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put this one in makes me a bit sad, to be honest, because this one, as opposed to her other books, I just like, I, I mean, no. I guess, no, I'll put this one in not bad, just not the best. It really doesn't do a lot for me. It's not a bad cover though. I don't think it's one that I look at and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pick up that book. So I feel like that middle category is a good spot for it. Next is the Tea Dragon Festival. So I'm just going to put this one here and then the Tea Dragon Tapestry. So both of these are by Katie O'Neill and they are so beautiful. I love her illustration style. Oh my goodness, it's just so lovely. So both of those definitely belong there. Next is Seance Tea Party by Ramina Yi. This once again is another one where I loved the illustration style for this graphic novel and the cover is one of the things that drew me to it in the first place. It is just very beautiful and exactly what I like from my illustrations. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. I'm going to put in Super Pretty. I feel like this is kind of more of the adult romance illustrated cover that I would gravitate towards. I think it just has a little bit more going on which I like. The Fountains of Silence by Rudis Apetis I think I'm going to put in super pretty as well. This is another photographic cover but I think it gets across the setting for the story and the color scheme I also really like as well for whatever reasons like like I couldn't really tell you but I just feel like it suits it. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Honestly I'm going to put this one in makes me a bit sad. I just don't care for that cover. It's not my kind of cover. I understand it's like a minimalist one that would appeal to a lot more people. I do enjoy the font that they chose. I just, it's definitely not my style. I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch on the other hand is definitely my style. I do really love this one. So I'm gonna put this one in super pretty. I think that it is so cute. I love that the comics are on either side of it as well. Like it's just a really fun one. Heartstopper by Alice Oseman is actually also going to go in art in its highest form. 
I'll put this one, I'm gonna put this one in super pretty, kind of at the higher end there. I think it's really cute, but I just, I don't know. There's something like, it's, I, I'm hesitant to put it in that top category. Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore is another example of those illustrated adult romances that I really love. So this one is going to go in super pretty. I think it's a super cute one and just fits the story really well. The Night Country by Melissa Albert for sure is going to go in art in its highest form. I love the covers for this series. I love how there's like so many different Easter eggs in it. It's just, oh, it's so lovely. I don't love the color scheme for this one. It's kind of an interesting choice, like the dark blue with this like rusty orange almost but I don't hate it either. Slay by Brittany Morris I think is such a nice cover so I'm going to put this one in the top tier as well. I think this one does a great job of like showing the character but then also getting across like the digital aspect to it so I think it combines the two of them so nicely and just makes for a beautiful cover. Love the color scheme and everything. I just think it perfectly encapsulates what the story is about. American Royals by Catherine McGee. I'm going to put this one in super pretty. It's kind of at the lower end because honestly it doesn't do all that much for me, but I do understand, like I see where they're going and I think it captures what the story is about. The Toll by Neil Schusterman. I kind of just have neutral feelings towards these covers to be honest. I like the whole series, they just, they don't do a ton for me. So kind of a harder one because I don't hate it. I would say it's at the higher end of not bad, just not the best. Get a Life Chloe Brown, for sure. That's kind of like more of what I want from the right swipe. I don't know, like there's not that much of a difference to be honest, it's just something about it. I just prefer this one. I can't, I, I don't know, but this one I'm going to put in super pretty because I think it's really cute. Also it has the cat on it, which is always fun, but it is a really nice cover. I don't know what the difference is to me between those two and it's kind of bugging me, but oh well. Next is 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. So this one I think I'm going to put in super pretty. I love the balloons. I don't really get why there's balloons to be honest, because that would make me think it's like a like birthday story or New Year's, but it's actually a Christmas story. So I don't really know why there's balloons, but I do enjoy the fact that there are balloons. Like I think it's a fun twist and ends up being a really cute cover because of that. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. I'm sure you know where this one is going because this is just absolutely so, so, so beautiful. So beautifully illustrated. I love the purple. Like I love everything about this cover. I love the font. It's just, I love that you can see the setting and that like you have such a striking character. Like it is just so lovely. Love this one. The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I'm going to put it in super pretty. It's definitely one of the things that drew me to these books in the first place is the cover. I think it definitely gets what the book is about. Lovely War by Julie Berry. I feel like is kind of like lower end of super pretty to be honest. I think it's a nice cover and it's there's nothing wrong with it it just doesn't really stand out to me i think it captures everything about the book but i don't know i kind of i'm hesitant to put it in super pretty i kind of want to put it in not bad just not the best but I'm, I'm just gonna commit. We're gonna commit before I overthink it. Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. I think this book, definitely the cover shows what the magic system is about. The magic system is based in mirrors. So having this broken mirror is a really powerful statement. However, it's just, a, again, like a book that's not really my sort of cover. So not bad, just not the best. It doesn't really stand out to me apart from a lot of other YA books that look like that. So I think that's part of it. Mooncakes, on the other hand, this one is actually going to go up to art in its highest form. I think this is such an adorable, adorable cover. So cute. And I mean, the illustrations inside are also adorable. Come Tumbling Down by Sean and McGuire. I'm going to say that this one makes me a bit sad. It's definitely my least favorite of the covers of the series. I like some of the other ones more and it just, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it per se. It's just kind of boring. Witchy by Ariel Slamet Rees. I'm going to say is super pretty. I think this is a really nice cover and yeah, I don't know. I'm running out of things to say about covers, to be honest. Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I'm going to put this one in super cute or super pretty as well, because I think it's cute. And I think it gets across what the book is about. Like you get the New York, you get the two characters, you get the the speech bubbles that the uh, title is in. I think that's a good idea because it is like a very social media digital story. So it's yeah. It does the job. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar is so beautiful. That is like, 
such a gorgeous cover. I love that cover. I love that you have the representation of a transgender boy and the top surgery scars just out. Like, it's just so nice to see that representation there and to have such a beautiful image. Like, I understand now why there's paint behind because it is set in an art school, which is really cool. And I just think it does a great job of getting across all the messages. When We Were Magic by Sarah Gailey, I think that this one is going to go in super pretty. I think I think it definitely drew me to the story. I like seeing all the characters because there's a lot of characters in this friend group in this story, but I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme, to be entirely honest, so it is kind of on the lower end of that category. Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hingwen I think is so lovely, so I'm going to put that one in the top category. I think that this just, I love the background, and it's kind of like an interesting night sky sort of thing that's going on, and the font and everything, and also like this beautiful girl, like it's just so nice. It's really funny with this video compared to my actual, like, based on the books and having read them because I had so many books in the middle category and then I had way more at the bottom here but most of these books are at the top like I feel like publishers are doing a great job with covers one and two honestly I think it just draws me to a book if it has a pretty cover which is like sad to say but it's true an embarrassment of witches I'm going to put in makes me a bit sad I I, I don't know there's something about this cover, honestly, that I don't really love, and I can't exactly pinpoint what it is. Maybe it's like the angles? I don't know. The Great Gatsby, I'm going to put in, not the bad, just not that bad, just not the best. So that one, it, it honestly, that describes it. It's not bad, it's just, there's nothing much to it. The Witches by Roald Dahl, that's kind of one of the issues that I had with this book, to be honest, was I don't like the illustration style. It's just not my taste. So I'm gonna put this one in tragic. I just really don't like it and like I feel bad saying that but it's just I don't know. My Calamity Jane I'm going to put this one in super pretty. I love the covers for this series. I love how the title is so big and bold but then there's also little annotations on it. I think that it totally captures what the series is and how the writers do it with like the little annotations and comments there. Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston I think is beautiful. Love that one. So art in its highest form for sure. It's like laid out like I don't know. It's just it's a really really nice cover. Long Way Down the Graphic Novel, this one is going to go in art in its highest form. I know I put, I don't even remember where I put it. Yeah, so I put just the original one in Not Bad, just not the best, but I think that the illustrations for this series, or for this series, for this graphic novel were so amazingly done, and I also like that you can see each like kind of floor of the elevator, if that makes sense. I think that's cool. Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas, art in its highest form. This is a beautiful cover. You have the two, like you have the figure behind them, I think it definitely gets everything that's going on in there and I love the color scheme as well. I've never really seen a cover that's that color before but it's so beautiful. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren I'm gonna put in not bad just not the best. I like there's nothing wrong with that cover. It's kind of similar to the right swipe. This is just a cover that doesn't do a lot for me. It's not bad, it's just kind of there. Which light is going to go into the doo -doo -doo art in its highest form. That cover totally drew me to the story. I think it is very, very nice. The illustrations on the inside kind of were more interesting. Like they have a kind of strange like color scheme, I guess, but I do enjoy the cover and how shiny it is. 25 Days Till Christmas by Poppy Alexander. This one I'm going to put into either super pretty or not bad, just not the best. I'm gonna put it in super pretty. I think that is a nice cover. I like the fact that it looks like an advent calendar. I think that's a fun and unique addition. Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. One of the things that draws me to her books, honestly, are the covers. I love this illustration style. This one is no exception. I love that the title is like the actual like I don't the name of the store I guess is what I'm trying to say but I think it's just such a cute one. The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This is another one. I love the cover. It's another one where there's kind of like hidden things in it so the more you look at this skull the more you will see from it which I think is so cool. I love covers like that. The Paper Girl of Paris by Jordan Taylor. So 
so this one I'm going to put in super pretty. I like the color scheme and I think it does a good job of telling you what the story is about and I like the mix of fonts too. I think that's really nice. So it's kind of a cover that I think they took a lot of care in. Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This one is going to go into art in its highest form. She has really lovely covers for her books to be honest. Like all of them have such nice covers and this one no exception. I like that the division is a plane because it's about two sisters who they live on opposite sides of the world and they end up finding out about each other like they had no clue that the other existed until their father dies in a plane crash so definitely a very powerful cover and it totally encapsulates it. I don't know if I'm using that word correctly but apparently I'm just gonna use it today. I don't know where that's coming from but Undercover Bromance is the next one and I'm going to put this one in super pretty as well. I think these are really nice illustrated covers and this one like gets the stealthiness across. I think it definitely does fit the book. The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. I'm going to put in super pretty or do I want to put it in super pretty or art in its highest form? I am torn between these two. Okay, I'm going to go with super pretty. I think that this one is really nicely illustrated. It like, I don't, it's right on the cusp there. Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I'm also kind of torn between super pretty and art in its highest form for this one. I'm going to go with super pretty because I don't enjoy it as much as her other series, but it is still like a nice and striking cover. Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane. So this one I'm going to put into uh, super pretty. So I would say I do like that cover. One of my issues with that book though was the illustrations are really bright and it's not just my, it's not really my taste. It was like super, super bright, but I think that they did a good job of balancing the colors on this like cover. It's like, it's not a bad book, but it just, I don't know, something about the inside, it was just so many colors which I personally don't really like for my graphic novels. Beach Read by Emily Henry I'm going to put in super pretty. I think this is a nice cover. I don't love it but like I do think it is nice and pretty and yeah how many times am I gonna say cute and nice and pretty? I don't know but Punching the Air by E.B. Zoboy and Yusuf Salam is going to go in art in its highest form. I think this is such a powerful cover. Totally captures the book and is just like very very well done. So that is where we are at with the tier ranking. That is all of the covers for the books that I've read. Super interesting to compare this with my list for like actually having read the books but I mean it is kind of I feel like super pretty became the new middle category there for or, like, I don't know for whatever purpose but yeah so I think this was fun it was really hard to decide and actually rank them but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless so tomorrow for bookmas day 27 I'm going to be showing you guys every single book that is currently on my TBR or to be read pile so essentially every single book that I have that is unread so I still have to film that and I'm really dreading it because it's gonna take me forever but yeah you guys can subscribe if you don't want to miss that I will be putting out a new video every single day for the entire month of December so you can click that notification bell so you won't miss any of them but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow with a new video bye